Welcome to Rheumatology Highlights Report. This is Dr. Len Calabrese from the R.J. Fazenmeyer Center for Clinical Immunology at the Cleveland Clinic. These reports are designed that within a span of 15 minutes, we can update you on an important topic. We're all busy. We don't have to, time to keep up on all aspects of the literature, but with Rheumatology Highlights Report, in the time of a canceled patient or at lunchtime, you can uh, take in a a single topic. Today we're going to talk about advances in vasculitis. So what do we have to say? Well, by way of background, the treatment goals for ANCO-associated vasculitis are well known to all of us. We want our patients to survive. We want them to survive with intact internal organs. When we're successful at doing this, we want to do it in a way that they don't relapse. and We want to minimize toxicity. Every person listening to this knows that in the past uh, few months, we have had a major change in the pattern of treatment of particularly ANCA-associated vasculitis with the approval of the first drug to treat these diseases uh, in the form of rituximab. And we have a lot of questions and a lot of data uh, to look at, so let's get going. The approval, the pivotal study for the approval of, rit uh, of rituximab was the RAVE trial. This is now uh, well known to all of us. Uh, it was published in July of, uh, of uh, last year. Uh, it was a non-inferiority trial of cytoxan versus uh, rituximab um, in ANCO-associated vasculitis. And the primary endpoint was six months remission off of prednisone. Tall task. And uh, the bottom line was is that we know that uh, rituximab uh, is as, ef as effective for remission, induction, and maintenance um, uh, as cytoxin at six months. So this was, this was extremely important. What we now know um, in this work of Ulrich Specs is that we have the 18-month follow-up data. So after six months, patients were allowed to stay on in remission. Um, uh, now, remember, in, in the rituximab lib, they were on nothing. The other limb, they were on azathioprine. So what happened at 18 months? Well, in this slide, we see that um, the final um, outcomes at 18 months still favored uh, rituximab, with 64 achieving uh, primary endpoint, 53% um, the uh, secondary endpoint, um, and that um, uh, it still uh, was a non-inferior drug. So this is a pretty impressive bit of data and something that um, uh, we're going to uh, continue to be looking at. Let me break this down for you a little bit more. Here's the questions that we have. Um, who's the ideal patient for rituximab? People with mild, severe, relapsing disease. Uh, what is the, the maintenance regimen that should be followed rituximab? Should we only observe? Um, and um, uh, what will the uh, adverse event profile be in the short and long term? And what are the role of adjunctive therapies? Everything from IVIG to apheresis. Um, looking at a little more granularly, this is the first phase of the uh, RAVE trial. At six months, I gave you the data. 64% remission of rituximab, 53% for cytoxin. In this graph, we can see the full 18 months of data. Um, and here you can see that these lines are not significantly different and that uh, the probability of remaining in remission is, um, uh, uh, is basically equivalent uh, for both of these limbs. Now, what should be remembered that if you look at the rituximab line, there's about 60% of people who with just a single course of rituximab and induction steroids um, uh, a year and a half uh, later are still in remission. Um, so our conclusions are 18 months, 12 months, 6 months, no difference between these limbs. Uh, there was time to complete remission, time to first flare were not difference between these limbs. And there was no difference between the severity and organ involvement of flares. So I think at the present time, um, uh, this uh, gives us uh, uh, additional uh, ammunition um, uh, to be enthusiastic about this therapy in appropriate patients. Now, let's turn and ask the, 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 the question that, as we say, inquiring minds want to know. 
what do you do after a single round of rituximab? Is the disease cured? Well, clearly it's not. 40% of patients have already relapsed by uh, month 18. So do we need to give it again, or should we give it like in rheumatoid, uh, we, where we've seen that regular rounds of therapy appear to be more effective than letting the disease totally flare? So I'll show you a little bits of data. First is a, uh, 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 a study by Jones uh, presented at the uh, International ANCA meeting in Chapel, Chapel Hill in, in May. And they said that, well, if you, uh, the premise is that most patients who respond to rituximab will ultimately relapse if you follow them long enough. So let's compare giving it in different ways. Um, let's either wait till the patient flares or give it at Q6 month intervals, kind of in a rheumatoid fashion, um, and compare the differences. Now, this is not a randomized controlled study. This is a study with inherent historical bias, biases, um, where the early patients were treated singly and the more recent patients were treated repeatedly. Um, uh, so here are the regimens that can be seen. Um, uh, from 2002 to 2006, it was non-protocolized, and they waited for relapse, and after that, uh, patients were treated uh, on a regular basis uh, according to this schedule. Um, here is a Kaplan-Meier plot looking at the proportional relapse-free rates, and you don't have to be a statistician to see that if you protocolize this uh, drug, uh, that the remission rate uh, in a sustained fashion is palpably higher. And uh, by 25 months, two years, um, uh, only about 20 uh, some percent have flared compared to the vast majority um, in the non-protocolized way. So I think now the challenge is to figure out who um, are, the, are, are the ones that are gonna stay in remission and who are not. The next slide shows results uh, of an oral presentation uh, from London, uh, number 0049 from the DAS uh, uh, and colleagues uh, in Leeds, asking the question of what is the effects of rituximab um, in inducing stable long-term responses in ANCA-associated vasculitis. So they examined 22 patients with ANCA-associated uh, vasculitis. All patients received rituximab um, and steroid taper. Um, and at the end of this, they assessed uh, what type of responses they had seen. And they divided them into complete responses, that would be BVAS of zero, and partial responses. And I think the bottom line here was a very interesting observation. While this may be preliminary, what they found was is that if the patient was a complete responder, um, they were more likely to stay in remission and, in fact, um, stayed in remission for a mean of about 120 weeks versus those who were partial responders who uh, then had a mean of remission of about 81 weeks. So it suggested that retreatment at times of relapse may be appropriate than fixed uh, interval regimens. It also suggests that if a patient really has a profound uh, beneficial effect from rituximab, they may be able to wait. And those that have the, the lesser degrees of response um, may be protocolized. So we'll have to wait for larger studies. Um, another uh, fine investigator, John Niles, at the Massachusetts General Hospital, examined the effect of continuous rituximab therapy for ANCA-associated vasculitis in a, a fairly large cohort of 72 patients, half PR3, half uh, MPO. Uh, they treated with a um, uh, continuous rituximab regimen um, that were repeated uh, at fairly short intervals uh, to every four months. Um, they had a remission um, in all patients except for one with acute airway obstruction. Now think about that. All patients went into remission, uh, which is a pretty um, uh, strong statement about any therapy in ANCA-associated uh, vasculitis. Uh, by the time of follow-up, uh, there were uh, relapses um, in nine of the 72, uh, and the SAEs, uh, were not um, surprisingly severe. So their thought were is that this is very impressive therapy when given on a fairly regular uh, basis of continuous rituximab with high remission, low toxicity. 
uh, I think that this adds to our understanding, but it doesn't help me figure out who are going to be those 40% who did not have a second round of uh, rituximab, who in the RAVE trial, um, uh, 40 to 60% are still in remission. So let's turn and uh, look at uh, another aspect of ANCO-associated vasculitis. And that is the effect on granulomatous manifestations. If we think of ANCA disease, there's really two components to this disease. True vasculitis, small vessel, um, and uh, secondly, granuloma formation. This may be vascular, perivascular, or parenchymal. The granulomatous uh, disease has been the most recalcitrant to conventional therapy, particularly when it occurs in um, the nose, uh, the subglottic area, or the orbits. So what about uh, this uh, advanced therapy of rituximab for granulomatous disease? Um, this is the Lubeck group who have done so much to help us understand this disease. They looked at 59 patients who had refractory manifestations, uh, two-thirds of them from granulomatous, one-third of them from vasculitis, and they looked at the effects of um, uh, rituximab therapy. Well, here it's a little different. 9% complete remission, 52% partial response, 9% uh, unchanged, and 26% re, um, uh, progression. There was significant toxicity on uh, this great high rate of infectious uh, and severe infections. So the overall efficacy was good for refractory Wegener's, much better for vasculitis than for granulomatous uh, complications. Um, so we still have a long way to go, and we have no cure for this disease. So finally, let's uh, talk about a few miscellaneous topics. What about Churg-Strauss disease? Uh, this is a study from the French vasculitis group, 383 patients with Churg-Strauss. Um, we can learn a lot from this study. Um, only a quarter were ANCA positive. We know that, and this is confirmed. Uh, thromboembolic events in 8%, um, interesting and important, a, a low rate of cancer. This chart uh, really is the meat of this study because ANCA-positive and ANCA-negative patients um, with Churg-Strauss disease are different. And ANCA-positive patients tend to have more ENT, peripheral neuropathy, renal, and higher disease activity uh, at onset, um, although the death rates um, and the relapse rates are not palpably different. Both of these groups, in conclusion, do quite well with our standard of care therapies um, uh, with uh, 86 to 94 percent um, with five-year survival. So I await for this paper eagerly um, to help us get a better handle on churg strauss as an overall disease. Now let's just uh, take a, a, the last view. Um, polymyalgia rheumatica, an intense inflammatory disease, high SED rate, high CRP. What, uh, are, what is the answer for steroid refractory people? Well, TNF inhibitors have been pretty disappointing. Methotrexate is a puny therapy. Um, in theory, tocilizumab, an anti-IL-6, would be ideal. Um, do we have any hints? I don't like to highlight abstracts that are mere case reports, but there are this um, uh, very nice case report from Germany of two patients with refractory PMR um, treated with tocilizumab uh, showed rather dramatic effects. So uh, it is an unapproved therapy. It's a teaser, but I think that we are going to be looking for um, uh, uh, larger trials of this moving forward. Let's now turn and, and talk about cryoglobinemia and rituximab. There are numerous reports. Over 150 patients have been reported in the literature treated with rituximab as a therapeutic tool for mixed cryoglobinemia. Most of these are HCV-positive patients um, and a tough group to treat. Um, in this uh, small study from Torino, Italy, 22 patients with type 2 um, with significant disease, were treated with a, uh, a four-week course, the old lymphoma regimen uh, of rituximab, um, with uh, no other immunosuppressants given. Um, uh, because of the response rate, 13 required some additional uh, therapy, eight reinduction, uh, five with uh, maintenance. So what did they see in this? 
Well, first of all, they saw good effects on proteinuria, sedimentation rate, cryocrit, rheumatoid factor, and IgM, all significantly follow, falling. Secondly, there was no adverse effects on the viral control, with viral loads not increasing. Uh, there was improvement in bone marrow abnormalities in most but not all patients, and improvement in the polyneuropathy, which, you know, is a very difficult complication to treat. So this adds to our literature on rituximab and uh, supports uh, this as an effective therapy. A recent uh, consensus statement from the Italian uh, cryoglobinemia group uh, suggested that this should be first-line therapy for patients with other than mild disease. Uh, and we'll be looking at this again as well. Finally, uh, an old topic uh, with a little bit more data. Uh, what is the value of ANCA? Well, I can summarize this for you very simply. Uh, it is a potent test for diagnosis. It has high positive predictive value, uh, has lower negative predictive value, but an unequivocally positive ANCA by immunofluorescence and uh, immunoassay uh, has over 99% specificity for some form of ANCA-associated disease. Um, what about using it to follow disease activity? Well, this is an emotional issue, um, and with people um, uh, still debating this, but in this large meta-analysis, they show two things. Uh, one, yes, if you have ANCA-associated vasculitis and you're treated and the ANCA is still persistent, you have a greater likelihood ratio um, of uh, having persistent or flare of disease than if your uh, ANCA becomes totally negative. But if you look at the uh, actual um, uh, effect size in this uh, final graph, you can see that it is all very, very, very tiny. So uh, using uh, the value of mean results uh, to influence patients' uh, 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 treatment decisions on an individual basis can be precarious. So our conclusion from this study is that among patients with ANCA-associated vasculitis, rise in persistence of ANCA is only moderate, moderately predictive of future disease relapse, and there is limited use to serial ANCA measurements during disease remission. Even in my own department, there is a lot of differences of opinion. Some never check ANCA after the initial time. Others, like me, like to see if it's negative at the end and if I'm stuck with very intermediate um, uh, estimates of whether the disease is back or not, I may use it, uh, but not as a single arbiter of therapy. So that's 15 minutes of vasculitis. I want to welcome you back to there are 15 topics on rheumatology highlights report that in the span of a canceled patient or a lunch, you can take in lupus, metabolic bone disease, miscellaneous rheumatic conditions, psoriatic arthritis from some of the leading um, authorities in the world. Uh, this will be up for six months, come back frequently and often, and then come back when we uh, update it for the end of the year. Thank you.